Hello? Okay, great. I'll just not hit it, I guess. I, thank you very much for having me here in Fallbrook. Um, I was really surprised to see how many people are showing up. And, uh, and with the fair going, or street fair going on, that's great. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I am a small time rancher in Ramona. And uh, I do raise my own, uh, it's not many, I, you know, I raised, uh, you know, you can only eat so much beef at once, you know. But I raise, uh, I've got <clears throat> grass fed beef. And uh, what I do is, I'll show you in, in, in this uh, presentation, I do actually grow my own organic um, barley. And uh, the healthiest and happiest steers on the planet. Um, <clears throat> and which also, uh, there's something involved with that in how we are saving the planet just by feeding our steers the right stuff, you know, so. Um, I, you know, I start, you know, my, my life uh, has turned a really amazing, wonderful circle. And that is, is when I was a kid, I used to hop freight trains. And, uh, my, yeah, well, that's why I, I thought I was going to write the great American novel, you know. And uh, I would go up through the Central Valley and uh, get up into the high Sierras and, uh, you know, come back. I even, uh, when I was in 12th grade, I quit high school and um, hopped a train and went up to Bass Lake and, and enrolled in the high school there. And because they have these wonderful courses in high school, you know, animal husbandry, farming, uh, how to, you know, just how to manage, um, manage a good ranch. Because that's what they do up there, and you know, and they didn't have any of that stuff down in Burbank, California. It was all movie stars, and all that stuff. But um, uh, doing that through the years, going up and down the Central Valley, I, uh, you know, I, I, after going into the service and stuff like that, and coming back, um, I uh, I became a rodeo cowboy, and I started riding bulls. And uh, I was 30 years old when I did that. That's an old man when he does that stuff. But we'd come to Fallbrook, and we'd ride in the jackpots here. Um, his Cox Ranch, I don't know if anybody remembers them. Okay, well, um, do you remember? Uh, anyway, but uh, yeah, we used to come down on the weekends and, and uh, learn how to ride bulls and, uh, you know, get belt buckles and, you know, small prize money and stuff like that. And then I'd hit the rodeo circuit, and then I'd takes me right up, uh, they call the dinosaur rodeo uh, circuit, and uh, we'd go up and through the, you know, the valley and stuff, and, and then I would see the, ch uh, the orchards change, the trees, a lot of trees would, you know, all just die. And they had abundance of water. They had a lot of water back then, and, and coming up into the 80s. And um, then, then I found out, you know, uh, my last trip through there, Ranchers are fighting each other for their water. Uh, they're suing, they're suing the state. The state's uh, getting on their rear ends and stuff like that, and, and it's a sad thing. It's like water is the new oil, you know? So, um, what happened is uh, we, uh, my wife and I, uh, we, we lived in, uh, we live in Ramona, and we had uh, one spot, uh, that was, it's like uh, right on top of a hill, and a little valley uh, comes before it. And on um, October 22nd, when I'm coming back from duck hunting, up through the back of the 78, you know, from the Imperial Valley, I see some smoke coming up, and by Witch Creek, and the smoke like went up just a little bit, and all of a sudden just, you know, went, went west. And I'm thinking, oh my. I said, uh, here we go. And this is the Witch Creek Fire. And I thought, well, you know, it's like the Cedar Fire, the Cedar Fire burned all around us. You know, we, we escaped it. Anyway, we es can you hear me? Can you hear me now? We, es we can hear you. Anyway, we, we escaped the fire. And, but the Witch Creek Fire, you know, is like 10 o'clock at night, and all of a sudden, I'm standing there looking at all these flames and the wind chains. I could feel it coming at me. So we just packed up the dogs, and we left the Mercedes, and we took off down the hill because we had a place on the coast that we could stay. And for four days, we sat in our house, just numb. Didn't know what to do. And um, uh, I finally called a guy who was digging a well for us, 
uh, could you check on the ranch, you know? And he went out there and he says, are you the place that has those 12 solar arrays, you know, that go back and forth? I said, yeah. I says, you don't have anything left, buddy. It's all down to the dirt, you know? So we came back up and uh, we found my Mercedes was melted. We had pools of uh, aluminum and all sorts of stuff, engine line on the ground, and nothing was, nothing was there. Nothing was standing. And we thought, well, you know, here we go. Uh, what do we do? And so uh, we decided to build that house. And we built it, tried to build it to the uh, greenest specs as we could. Everything that we bought was recycled, you know, to the floors, the walls, um, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the brick. And then, of course, we had to buy uh, stuff that was considered green products. So there was a house above us, you know, really a, a, right on top that has a, a killer view, 360 degree view. And uh, this guy couldn't sell us or, or couldn't rebuild because his driveway was too <coughs> steep. So we thought, okay, you know, he put it on the market and we bought it for a song. So we went up there and we thought, okay, we're going to rebuild. And one of the guys from a, a, a building company called um, Allied Green Builders says, have you ever thought of building a passive house? I said, sure. When the hell is a passive house? <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, what now? You know, he says a passive house is amazing. He says they build them all over Germany because of the weather conditions. And so we're thinking, well, that means cold weather. Well, we're in pretty hot weather here. What's that going to do for us? He says, well, you'll see. What happens is this house will change your life. And so what we did is we did we excavated everything we blasted some uh some granite out of there and uh and we built this house now i want to know from any of you guys here uh what i want to do is i want to talk about the house and also then i want to talk about permaculture uh, uh ranching and how much time do i have tom got time <laughs> <laughs> okay I, if I see people yawning, I think I'm gonna, no. you know. So what we did, and I want to show you how we how we are actually gonna reverse climate change. That's my job now. I what the, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do what? We're gonna start reversing climate change. And number one way we're gonna do it is we're gonna create uh, solar energy that uh, is gonna give us more solar energy than we had from 12 panels that was down at the other house. We had these, uh, you know, like I said, rotating panels. And uh, so we went to Germany and we found these, um, these uh, solar panels that actually rotate with the orbiting of the Earth and the Sun. They don't depend on the Sun rising and the heat coming off, you know, the, that directs the, uh, that directs the, um, uh, the, the panels. Um, we're actually doing it as the earth changes and the, as the equator moves around, you know, and tilts and you get your different uh, seasons, it gets the optimal amount of sun hitting those, those panels. And like I said, they came from Germany. So, you know, it, uh, it really sent us back a lot of money. But they're really solid and we get really high winds there uh, sometimes. Like I wanted to tell you about the Witch Creek fire. When that fire hit our house, it hit it at 120 20 miles an hour. And that was with flame. It had embers and everything. Okay. And the it did. 2007? That was in oh, 2007, okay. October 23rd, 2007. Yeah. And uh, as it came at us, like I said, it went through the, uh, over this valley where our, where our uh, sun trackers were and blew over the valley and didn't even burn anything down below. That's how fast and hard it went. And we found a bunch of dead carcasses of rabbits and birds, and they weren't even burnt. They just sucked out the air uh, and, and suffocated, suffocated them. And that's why it didn't burn up those, those um, solar trackers. So we're still using them today. And um, they, they produce a, a quite amount, you know, good amount. So we put these uh, up here. And as you can see, it's got its own little weather main, or a little, uh, what do you call those things? Yeah, a wind, wind. And a, and a monitor. Yeah, there you go, thank you. And um, uh, when it gets too windy, those, uh, the, those panels will horizontal out. 
automatically and it protects himself. Okay, you want to go on there, Will? So is that when you turn on and get the wind turbine going? Well, I'll show you. Uh, we're going to go into another, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, that is a uh, helical uh, wind turbine, okay? It, uh, the difference between that one and the propeller type are there no bird kills. Um, you see a lot of out there uh, when you go out towards um, Ocotillo Wells, those gigantic uh, windmills, is that they, they do kill a lot of birds. I mean, th that's a duck flyway, a partial duck and a goose flyway uh, in, in, in some of those areas down there. But we haven't found one kill uh, off that wind turbine. And what it does, it produces about mm, 22.1, 20.2 uh, kilowatt hours. And no, no, not that. I'm sorry. The the the, uh, the solar panels do. That produces 3.1 or 3.2 uh, kilowatt hours. And the sun, uh, when the sun goes down, the wind picks up. So we've got energy being produced into the night. And um, it, uh, it, it actually produces three times the amount of energy that we need in that place. Yes. Of course, we did hook up. Uh, I mean, we could just shut off and get off the grid. But we did hook up with SD Genie, and we are sharing some of the, you know, the electricity. Uh, so um, and it, and it, what it also does is we get electricity pretty cheap. Uh, we also store our, our power. Um, do we have that? Oh, here we go. This is our battery room, and um, we are online to get the Tesla battery, the commercial size, uh, the, the wall battery, and as soon as we do that, we're just going to say bye-bye, SDG and &E. We hate your guts, <laughs> because they're the ones that caused the fire that burned our house down, you know, and uh, it, a couple of other lines were un, under... Uh, under regulated whatever and they actually sparked and they caused uh, in the wind they, and they caused a fire big lawsuits a lot of our neighbors sued them and and got a lot of money from them we decided we didn't want to sue we just want to stay away from those guys <laughs> so anyway yeah it, uh, it it stores those batteries and it also tells us how much uh, energy is coming in now this control thing uh, this is a Creston control uh, it's been used uh, this company here that came in and put this in has used these for the military in uh, controlling their a lot of their systems, um, uh, you know, uh, environmental systems in in certain buildings and stuff like that. So you know, it's got uh, we have ability to to um, you know uh, surveillance cameras. Uh, we have automatic shades. Uh, we could do it from our remotes, our iPads. When we're away from home, we can. Click it up and see what's going on, uh, you know, in our, in our, you know, in the areas and stuff like that. Um, the uh, the lights, uh, the lights, and this is fan coils here, and let's see what else. Um, climate and uh, I can't I can't read that. It's it, it's pretty hard. But what we can do is we can go into that thing and we can tell exactly how much power is being used from every outlet in the house, every light bulb, uh, every vent, every air, you know, air system, uh, any kind of coils, because we're constantly recording what's going on in this house because we're going, in the future, we're gonna be able to say, you know, this is what, we're gonna have all this data that we're gonna need, so when we start creating these homes on a, on a, a higher rate and a cheaper rate, by God, <laughs> that it's going to, um, this is valuable information, yeah. especially the products that come in to us and they say, well, okay, this is going to do this and this and this and this. Well, okay, we're going to find out, you know, and this uh, actually reproduces uh, uh, a lot of good data for us. And it also controls the TV set. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have two questions. Who makes the solar panels in Germany and who is the manufacturer? Okay, uh, we can go into that. Uh, let's see when we. Yeah, we can go into that. It has that information uh, later on, and I'm going to go through the list. I can go through the wind turbine and, uh, and everything on going through here. So let's let's just keep on 
go on, uh, and then when we get questions, okay. we can go back to that, okay? Okay, where do you want to go? Uh, so let's go back to the house. Can we go back to the house and the well, door? Uh, yeah, the kitchen. So what's the URL for your website? Oh, so, um, Casa, um, dot, yeah, Casa dash. dash Agala. Casa dash Agala. Agala means eagles. Because we get golden eagles that fly around and, and, and perch up in our pine trees that, uh, that are on top of it. And then we've got all these raptors, you know, all these really beautiful birds. I used to be a falcon, and I just go, oh man, I just love to, you know, train these birds, but, you know, it's just, they're so beautiful. Um, anyway, I want you to, see, uh, this is very important. I don't know if you can see on top of that, uh, uh, the, the, apex of the, the apex of that roof, um, that is the water, hot water. Uh, solar and we have constant of course hot water in this thing and um, The roof is our water collection system We collect rainwater Okay, and we use rainwater to drink wash uh, With but we also use it to irrigate with and we also use it to flush our toilets with and wash our laundry with Now you think that's a lot of water in it just from rainwater and when does it rain? It doesn't. <laughs> so what did we do? We put in 90,000 gallons worth of water collection. So that means we have nine 10,000 gallon tanks. We can pull that up somehow. I don't know. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, can you see any tanks here? No. No. Up on top of that hill, there are three 10,000 gallon water tanks. That's for fire for drinking, and also for irrigation up there. And down, and they're camouflaged. When they came, they were bright silver. And then there's some people that kind of live around us, and they go, what the heck? What is that? What are you turning this place into? It was all shiny and all that stuff. But I said, well, you know, there's a plan. How many yeah. acres do you have? How much what, man? Acres. Um, this area right here is about eight, and then we have a total of 20. Yeah. Does it require a lot of land? No. Oh no. It just we're well. I'll tell you. We're we live on a hill, and uh, down on the hillside. I'm. See, here's a here's one of the tanks that. Oh, never mind. This is sky. I didn't like it. <laughs> anyway, so here here's some tanks right here. This is you know what they look like, but then they came on the hill and then we painted them, and they they're up against the hillside. And then after we camouflage and we put trees, uh, we put trees around it, and the trees are going to, you know, they're growing up nicely now. And they, and nobody can see them when they drive up. I said, "Do you see the tanks when you're cutting?" No, you know. So cool. All right, and something's working. And this is a, this is an amazing system here. What we have, we have the rain, and it'll come uh, as it comes down and it hits the roof. That's our drinking water. That's the cleanest water that we have. And we have a separate collection system for that, okay? And um, uh, it, it pumps it down actually to the tanks below us, and it, then it gets filtered and goes back up into the drinking water tank as, as filtered water. And then when it comes back down to the house, there's several filter systems that, on top of that, so, uh, which also ha has a little additive of some things that we like, kind of like water softening in a way, but um, it's very clean, it's very tasty, it's, it's incredible. But also, the storm water that gets down there and, and goes on the driveway, um, if you saw those pavers, you think maybe we can pull back and so I can show you, yeah, uh, no. <laughs> Anyway, it's important because the pavers, they percolate down into a collection system. So all that water that goes on this huge driveway, that, uh, not, yeah, the huge driveway and parking area, all that water gets collected. So, you know, we do collect 90,000 gallons of water. Now remember, uh, was it the beginning of the year we had a pretty good rain, it was like a three or four day rain? Okay. Uh, we collected in three days 60,000 gallons of water, and now we're storing it. Yes, ma'am? Where is that? Where is what? Yeah. Oh, that's on top of a hill in Ravona. Yeah, and 
Yeah, if you have a computer, go to our, our website, which we'll make sure that you uh, Thank they don't mind me. I'm just uh, <laughs> anyway. So um, yeah, there's the papers right there. It, it percolates and uh, it gets out of the run and, and collects that runoff, which is kind of dirty water, but we collect it anyway. And that's what we irrigate with. Yes, ma'am. You said that SDG and E started that fire with one of their transformers. Didn't they have to pay a giant fine or something well, for causing that? Well, I don't think they had to pay a fine as much as the, uh, a lot of people sued them. So I, I think I think they paid a fine. I don't know. You know, the, they could do what they want. They They're paid a fine, fine, but that they then they raised the rates for the taxpayer or the. They have well, the yeah. Taxpayers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they raised the rates to pay for the uh, to the for the lawsuits that they had. They, yeah. You know. Anyway, so. The, <laughs> Because they didn't want to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, so that's how we collect the water. And now let's talk about, let's see, want to move on uh, to another slide? Just scroll down or whatever is easiest for you. Well, um, why don't we talk about the insulation? Okay, let's talk about the insulation. Insulation is very important. The house is sealed, okay? Uh, the windows are very important. Uh, and also, the windows and the. <laughs> not to show that guy. Man, you're, you're out on me, man. You know? <laughs> anyway, the, the insulation uh, is pretty amazing and, and it's pretty advanced. Uh, what we did here, uh, we try to make this as fireproof as possible. So everything on the outside is, in, is, is not combustible. We use hardy board under the eaves. Uh, if we do have a vent, the vent is a fireproof vent. If uh, uh, the sitters won't go through it, uh, and if there's heated air uh, that's coming in there, what we do is we have an automatic shutdown on it. It'll close and keep smoke and um, and hot air out of out of those spaces. But in between here, what we have is blown cellulose. This is cellulose, you know, and it, it's thick, and when they blow it in, you know, it's all wet, but then it takes a couple of days to dry, and then it gets really solid, okay? And uh, the, we have drywall. The drywall is kind of special. You know when you buy a couch, and it really smells, and you know, it kind of, make, it kind of makes me sick sometimes, uh, and it's uh, gases coming off. So we have all these products, and when you have a new house like that, you're buying new furniture, and, and it, this gas has come off. Well, the drywall, it actually absorbs impurities. And then there's, this, there's a, a, a vent system that uh, is, it, it kind of vents itself, and it, and it blows it out of the house, okay? But that venting system is, doesn't, uh, doesn't allow the pressurization to be compromised. So the house has to be pressurized. I mean, it is pressurized. If, they, if I turn on a, 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 a hood fan and open up the door, the thing will knock me out because it just swings right open. It, it's that, that, that much. Um, and then what it does is we have our own air system that cleans the air every hour. And we have, you know, good, fresh, and you can feel it, good, fresh, you know, clean air. Um, <coughs> You don't get food odors. Uh, you don't. You know, if you got your dirty socks hanging around. It, it, it actually you know, absorbs that. That you know that kind of thing. And um, there's no dust. I haven't you know seen any. We haven't dusted I, in months. And the other house, you know, we live in Ramona. And the other house, it's just you know, it's like you sit down in a cloud of dust because it flies up in your chairs, you know. So it's a very, very healthy house. Underneath, we have a subsoil heat exchanger that keeps the house cool or warm, and that's done, this time we use water. Uh, on the other house, we did the same thing, but we used glycol. So this time we're using water, uh, and that's, uh, you know, it, it, it's working really well. Uh, let me go to that image. Uh, website. <laughs> What are the outside walls made of? 
Uh, it's um, your your plaster, your your regular stucco, and uh, yeah, it's just regular stucco in there because it's not that. It, I think it's about that thick, stucco. Yeah. There you go. Okay, now this is this is the kind of the I think it's amazing. Um, now just beneath the drywall, we have a kind of a third barrier uh, heat insulation. And it's called uh, uh, biomass, um, uh, bio, uh, what is it? Thermal mass, um, uh, what is it? Phase change, yeah. Thermal mass phase change material. And what it is, is big sheets of cells of fat, like human fat, but it's, you know, it's, it's uh, commercially made. And we line the inside of the drywall with it. So when it when a uh, when a substance is, when a uh, substance changes uh, its physical phase from a solid to a liquid, you know, liquid to a gas, from those different points of change, takes an awful lot of energy to do that. I mean, it slows, it slows, it gets up, and before it, a solid turns into uh, a liquid, it's got to have a you know have, it has to be a lot of energy to do that. So that will keep our house almost alone at 70 degrees. Okay, they use this at the Olympic training centers for the archery, because they indoor archery and they can't have air conditioning because of the flight, you know, the arrows and stuff like that. It will mess them up. So they have the whole thing lined just like that, ceiling along the walls. Um, and uh, yeah, everything is, is, and you don't want to have any kind of um, uh, leakage because that can compromise the whole thing too. Not much, but you know, they made sure everything was, was covered up. And so the drywall that uh, goes right over that and um, yeah. Oh, hey, hold on. Will, hey, well, just a little, I wanna show something. Okay, see these spots here, right here? Uh, those aren't light switches, those are sensors. So if I go into the kitchen, or if I'm in the kitchen, and I say, okay, it's time for a bath. And I'm walking down the hall. Well, the water heater is way in the corner there, uh, way, way back in the garage. And because we, uh, we the, the water pump, I mean, that pumps hot water, is way back there. And it's going to take a long time, and you're going to waste a lot of water to uh, get it all the way to the bathtub. So when I'm walking, there's a sensor on the wall that tells that, says, here he comes. <laughs> And I walk by, and all of a sudden, the hot water is being cycled as I, as I come into the bathroom, you know. And then when I turn on the spigot, all of a sudden, we get hot water immediately, which is amazing, you know, to me. I don't know why. It's amazing. But, you know, and, and because I have, when it didn't work, I sat and I waited five minutes of water going down my drain. And where does that water go? The water goes into a, uh, a um, septic system. And first it goes into, um, uh, into the septic system, then it gets passed on to the gray water system. Okay, and that what we do with that is we pump that gray water out into our food forest where we have all our vegetables and, and orchards and stuff like that, you know, fruit trees and stuff like that. Well, what happens to the black water? You know, the black. You know what I mean by black water. It goes into another tank, and it gets processed, and we reclaim the water that gets clean, and then we also pump it out, and we irrigate our trees. So this this is the first of its kind in San Diego County that got permitted for black water uh, black water use, and it's they didn't know what to do. I mean, San Diego came down the inspectors, and they've never done this before. So they had to get, you know, people, uh, technicians that knew this technology from other places to do that. So now we have this. Now we know that we can put this in every home, anywhere, that we can recycle our black water. Okay? You have a question, sir? Who came up with the design? Was it your contractor, or did you have an architect, or uh, design for, for the, the for the home? The total. Uh, we had a, an architect who designed the previous home. And he was familiar with this type of. Uh, no. So, so who was the one that came up with the? Uh, Allied Green Builders. 
Allied? Allied green builders. They're the ones <clears throat> that know the technology. You could design a house. Oh, wait a minute. Here's Bill Wilson in the septic tank. <laughs> and he is a genius. He's a guy, I mean, he's, you know, the guy's really smart. He's the really the one, the only one around Southern California that we know. Well, he goes all over the state and all over in different countries that does this kind of you know technology, and um, yeah, he's the one who saw it through. But you can design a house um, like a uh, just regular house, and what you got to do is just put the systems in it and, and figure out how it works. And this is what we had to do. We we're kind of like you know hit and miss. You know, what, how are we going to collect the water? We want to collect like 90,000 gallons of water. How do you do that? Okay, people are, you know, starting to sell us bladders, you know, big rubber bladders, or you take logs and then you can take uh, sheets and put like uh, either rails or logs and, and create a space and uh, just, you know, have the water come in and, and, and get stored there. But they kept on, we found out they kept on being compromised. And so, uh, yeah, private owners, you know, it's just that we have this vision, and especially my wife, has this vision that we can turn climate change around. We can do this. And it's happening. You see, I mean, I go out and, and, and I will drive out and by Hemet, and I'll see these guys disking. And, I'll, and what do you see when they disk it? You see all this topsoil going, you know, in the atmosphere. And it does break down. Carbon does leave our dirt. That's why the Imperial Valley is dead. You know, the only way they can get anything to grow down there, unless they turn it into an organic farm, is chemicals. And you're seeing them spraying all the time. So, you know, and, and they're always disking, you know, and I just, well, okay. You know, <laughs> there goes the carbon. But when we're doing this, uh, when we're doing this, uh, this kind of permaculture, uh, before I go into that, do you want to see more of the house? Yes. Yes. Okay. We have pictures. Um, let's let's put them on a quick tour. You know of, of the rooms and stuff like that. And I want to tell you something. My wife, um, who has never designed anything before in her life, before we started to have to rebuild these homes, she did the colors and she did all the buying of all the furniture and stuff like that. And uh, I bought a chair, but uh, you know, she, she wants to sell it. So it's, it's out on an outdoor patio. Yeah, it's outside. So <laughs> uh, it's going inside the interior. Uh, yeah. Oh, this, this picture here was featured on the front of San Diego uh, Home and Gardens magazine. And uh, we were pretty shocked about it. Uh, uh, we knew it was coming out, but when all of a sudden we saw the magazine, it, it just blew us away. And so most of these pictures are from the photographer that did the magazine. Um, you know, uh, these lights, every light bulb had been recorded. You know, the wattage, uh, the type, and even its vampire load. A vampire load, everybody know what that is? No. Okay, vampire load is like when you take a, like a toaster and plug it in, but you don't use it, it's draining electricity. It's pulling electricity. So every watt, you know, has to be accounted for. And because it fits in a formula of a, a lead certified passive house, uh, it has to fit that formula. And you should see what these guys had to do to do that. I mean, it was it was a lot of work. We had it. We had, we hired. We put about sixty people to work on this thing. And um, anyway, so that's why you know they look beautiful, and they've got a you know a lot of power in them, but they're very low uh, wattage lights. Uh, any inside uh, interior? Uh, bedrooms. bedrooms, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, this is a corner bedroom. Now look at the windows. You think a lot of you see the sun sets like right there, okay? You think a lot of heat's coming in that window. <laughs> well, they're triple pane uh, windows. They got I call them Superman windows because they're actually bulletproof, mm -hmm. and they've got three panes, two uh, laminated and one tempered, and in between each glass there's argon and there's krypton. 
And I said, there you go. It is, my Superman window. And then we've got the H room has a big ass fan. Okay, that's the product name. It's actually big ass fan. <laughs> it's um, a picture of a donkey on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and Brett goes, don't say that. I go, no, that's the product. You know, that's there. I didn't name it. So anyway, but they're they're San Diego company. Very, um, you know, they they just move the air around, and they're kind of good to have, you know, because like I'll be sleeping, you know, and and all of a sudden I just want to feel some air on, you, yeah. you know, and they're very low wattage too. They're uh, pretty cheap. Um, yeah, the, uh, and automatic shades. We have blackout shades and also just a regular, uh, you know, kind of like dim the light shades that are automatic and they're on the light switch. And uh, th those, are, those are really helpful. Um, when the sun is, is shining, you know, you can feel a little heat, but, you know, it's, uh, it's nothing to, uh, that, that, you know, really raises the temperature of the house. So, uh, can we go anywhere else? Um, Let's go to the garage. Let's see if we've got, I can show you the, show you the water system we have. It looks like a submarine down there. <clears throat> uh, maybe you can't see it, but this is our water system. We've got a 100 gallon storage tank in there that stores hot water from the sun. And then all these, I catch it, it looks like Ruth Goldberg. You know, all these pipes going everywhere, you know, and it's just like, if I, so what's the cost per square foot of a, of a building like that? Uh, that is a secret. <laughs> <laughs> and do you, I mean, there's, there's got to be an offset uh, with the utility savings and everything, but... There is. When you're not crazy. <laughs> when you're not crazy. We, we were crazy. We, went, we wanted to go for this thing. We wanted to, we wanted to prove that we could just do it. And this is madness, you know, that, that we that we were lucky to enjoy. So, yes, ma'am. I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, along those same lines of the cost, but you do have a vision for somehow making this all. Oh yes, are you yes. Available to most people. Yes. Yeah, we we wouldn't. No. <laughs> yes, that's it. Here I go. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to pull over and, and talk about this for one second. I'm getting together uh, next month with builders, uh, all the vendors, the people that uh, actually um, design these products, and um, we're getting involved with the Tesla uh, distributors to come down to my area and that area, and I'm trying to create manufacturing down there so I don't have to go to Germany and buy those stinking windows. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it's crazy how much money was was create employment. Yes, but the, the thing was is that we're gonna we're gonna if you if we manufacture this stuff here, we can build modular type homes. That diagram you saw that I showed you that with all the insul uh, insulation inside the walls, those could be done modular and and you know built without you know guys you know sitting there and doing the drywall and stuff like that. They can be built ready like a modular home, but solid, clean. Made in USA. You know, and it's like, in, 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 and uh, the systems will already be incorporated into the walls, into the ceilings. You know, it, it depends on whoever design that, that, uh, that you want or whoever wants to design it. But we were, you know, that's, that's, that's my vision. <coughs> to get this. So a guy that makes a paycheck can buy one of these things. And I know it can be done. I know it, and there's there's 30 companies out here that are gonna prove it. So that's, there, there you are. Yes, sir. Um, you consider use cement wall instead of wood frame wall for your <laughs> the, 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 the what bearing wall? Cement wall. Oh, the concrete wall? Concrete wall. You know what that's for? Pardon? That you, That's just for show. Just for show, no, you know, no, it has nothing to do with, uh, uh, no, that, that just, that, that defines our front door, and behind that is a screen porch, and also uh, a workout uh, exercise uh, house that I didn't visit too much, but anyway, we built it, 
But we built it out of rostra. Anybody know what rostra is? My brother-in-law and my parent and my uh, in-laws both have houses made out of rostra. Okay, you know what they are. Yeah. What do you think? It's awesome. Yeah. I think it's R52 or something yeah. like that. And, uh, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. What it is, it's uh, their, uh, their uh, what do you call it, um, cells. Cells, you know, rectangle cells that are empty in the middle, kind of like a cinder block. But you, you know, big ones like that, you can pick them up. Because they're made out of recycled plastic bottles and styrofoam and all that stuff, and then mixed with uh, a little concrete or cement, and they're so easy to, uh, to 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 pick and stack. And what they do is they put rebar down the middle of it, sure. and then you can cut out. Let's say if you want to put in electricity, your lines, your piping, stuff like that. All you do is take a router and you cut it out. Stick in whatever you need, and then you can plaster over it. If you need to get to it, it's real easy. You just they zip right use through. Chainsaws. Yeah, it's yeah. Chainsaws. And you can you can curve it. It's it's like and you shave it. You know you model it. Wow. And so we had our you know ours was like in a oval, or not oval, but curve. You know, um, and um, and then you fill the inside with concrete. And then it's you know, things like a pillbox, you know, things like a uh, whatever, you have to shoot a cannon at it to blow it up, you know. And it's very quiet. Yes, ma'am. Did you want to? Uh, it's like prefab block, um, Lego there. blocks. But my question is, it fire? Is it what? Fire. Ah, oh, yeah. that's what I asked. Why don't I want to build a house right there, you know, with a bullseye, like from the last time? Where the fire just came through, right? Uh -huh. I said, "Is the fire truck?" Goes, "Oh yeah." So I took a piece, I put it on the burner on my uh, kitchen, and I just left it there. You know, I left it there for it's about an hour. You know, and it, and you can smell the, uh, you can smell the styrofoam kind of burning a little, but it didn't change shape. So what yes, it's fireproof. What do you? What's the name of it? Rostra. 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 It's R A S T R A. Sir, back there. I'd like to backtrack, if I can, for just a moment about the, uh, the modular houses that you're, you're holding this vision for building, which I think is exciting. Yes. And wonderful, and I commend you on that. But I'm also wondering <coughs> if, if part of that vision isn't going to provide resources for existing structures. Uh, I, I'm speaking as a minister who has a church. <coughs> and certainly not wanting to build a new church, but, but bringing a church that's going to tread softly on the earth. Will resources become available for people like us or other kinds of buildings or existing homes? Well, think about it. We had a frame. What we did, we framed the house. Okay, every, it was just a framed house. It's just the components, what we put in it. So, yeah, I would say, yeah, why not? I mean, why not? I mean, you'd have to, you know, you do the, you, you would have, if you wanted the integrity of a passive house, you know, a, a net zero energy use house, then you've got to follow the formula. Okay, so it's like you know, yeah, you could do. I would say you could do it, you know. Yeah. So to add on to that question, then, um, and and wanting to support you in your aspirations as you're moving forward with this, um, is there part of a plan that to start being a clearinghouse or a place where resources, contractors, providers become available for us to find and <laughs> That's exactly what we're want to do. <clears throat> What's that? That's exactly what we want to do. We want to catch the imagination of everybody here. And find, and look, this can be done. I know it costs a heck of a lot of money to do this. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Um, two things. One is, um, when I look we, we, we catch our own water and we use it to water. But mm -hmm. I was looking to you know recycle the water from the wash machine and all that. Mm -hmm. But when I looked into it, it said we had to have our house above. You know, if we had a basement, or if our, but if you have slabs, mm -hmm. you can't do it. You can do it for a new house, but they're just starting from scratch. Yeah. But see, that seems to be a problem. Uh, but we, we still have the barrels, nevertheless. Yeah. And but the other thing is, I like what um, uh, Reverend Guy said back here, because um, it just seems to me this should be being taught at the vocational schools. You know, even if, oh, yeah, like yeah. in Palomar, for example, they yeah. do tons of vocational. It seems to me that um, what's being the new stuff, and they're, they're trying in a lot of the colleges to, to pick up on this, but 
that would be the kid. Well, a lot of people just scratch their head when you say pacifist. Right. Even when you talk to professors, you know, they don't, and, they don't and, know this and, yet. And, yeah, and yeah. architects and stuff like that. You know, what the heck is a pacifist? Mm -hmm. So, and so what we're, you know, I've been in, co in contact with the uh, guys who are doing the modular homes, you know, the, the yeah. kind of modular homes. And this will go way beyond a modular home, you know, the, that kind, you know, future, that future. you see driving down yeah. the freeway, yeah. you know. So, anyway. Um, so, okay, you know, <clears throat> here's, here's that, there's that range hood, the big sucker right there, that when you turn it on and open the, like, that door on the right there, I mean, that swings out and if you're standing in front of it, bam. <laughs> but uh, to prevent that, we have automatic vents that now open up and close after the uh, after you're using the hood, so no air is escaping out of the house, out of the envelope. So, anyway, uh, did we see all the homes? Well, I, I, I think oh, it, it, this is important. It, this is very important. The appliances, and I'm not trying to sell you appliances. Trust me. But the appliances that fit the formula have to be the lowest rating energy use appliance you got. So you don't want to buy something that's just not going to work very well. So we had to go with Bosch. Oh man, you know, you know Bosch and Thermador and, and, and those guys, and they were the lowest rate. Even the washing machines, you know, we have the, our dryer doesn't have a vent uh, going out the house. You know how you have a regular vent? It doesn't have one of those. It actually, it's a self-contained thing. And, you know, you clean the filter like you would clean uh, regular and stuff like that. Anyway, anything else? Oh, yes, wait, back. This is a conduction stove. Anybody seen one of those? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you know what a conduction stove is, right? Yes. It's, a, you, it, 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 you need to use an iron skillet. Because when you turn it on, the stove doesn't get hot. It's got batteries down in there, and you put an iron pan on there, and it gets the pan hot, and that's it, because it's the magnets that keeps doing its circular thing, whatever that <clears throat> that messes up with the you know molecules and stuff like that. So so and it works really well. I mean, you could put it up to like boost, and bam, you got boiling water almost immediately. And, yes, ma'am. <clears throat> oh, um, these are, I'm glad you asked that. These are the counters that um, they're, they're used uh, clean, re uh, recycled material. But um, uh, yeah, I, I can't, we, we have to go, okay. Eco Lagoon, Constantine, that's right. Oh, Cosentine, Kino. That's the product, Cosentino, okay. And um, yeah, they're uh, environmental friendly. I mean, they, we, we got them and they... Um, Is it a stone or what? Uh, it's a recycled Recycle. material, yeah. Recycled stone. And, and so then we have counters that are outside that are just, they're, uh, they're kind of like blast proof. They are actually, um, they're, they're artificial, but the, you know, you can put you know, red hot irons on them and, and they won't scorch or anything like that. So anyway, so... Um, should we go into the ranching? Yeah, let's let's go on to the uh, the, the ranching here. <laughs> okay. Um, what? <laughs> okay. I raised raised beef. Okay, and my purpose was is that I don't want to uh, eat beef that's going to give me heart disease or give me colon cancer. So the key to that was we found out that if you raise grass pure grass fed beef. You know, and I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm afraid that I belong to the uh, American Grass uh, Beef Association mm -hmm. in America. You know, and um, there's a, uh, the policy is, is that you have to feed them on grass up to a point. You can feed them to fatten them up. A little of the stuff, whatever that stuff is that they use. Corn. That causes a lot of methane. Okay. And um, anyway, it, it, it's just not so good for them. What I do is I... Uh, I grass, I graze them, and then, uh, well, that's a chicken tracker right there. Have you ever heard of a chicken tracker? Okay, yeah, they, the chickens love it. And I drive them around the, 
you know, the pastor, you know, and they like to eat all the insects, and we get the best eggs in the world, you know, and also the best uh, meat chickens, too. Really good. Uh, here's me. I'm learning how to be a politician shoveling horse crap. <laughs> and um, th this right here are my steers. They're eating uh, organic barley, okay? Um, they love it. It's delicious. It's like dope. You know, they just love it. And um, you want to go back to the uh, seeds? Okay, inside I have a thing that looks like a huge refrigerator. And inside I have these shelves where I shove these trays full of, this is organic barley. This is um, uh, black oil uh, sunflower seeds. And then I put in alfalfa, uh, sprinkle in alfalfa and also crimson clover and uh, maybe some flax seeds sometime. And in six days, the, this seed grows into barley, which is about that high, okay? And it's the most healthy, tastiest, I eat it myself. It's like, no, it's when you go to the market, you know, and you get sprouts, yeah. well, this is it. Yeah. And especially the sunflower seeds, it's really tastes nutty and it's, it's really good. So, yeah, and the, the compost, that's my compost pile, and uh, it's from my horses. And what we do is we take our garbage and we dump it in there and, and it, it, it creates the best, you know, you, you pick it up and it, you just feel it's alive, you know. You get that smell of, of, of like fresh earth out of it. And um, I spread that on, on my field. Now the secret to my pasture, and this is the secret, I think, to uh, getting a, 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 a bringing uh, carbon sequestration to our lives. And what we want to do is we want to pull the carbon out of the atmosphere back in the soil where it belongs. Um, so what we did is we had to learn for raising cattle, we had to learn how to grow grass. That's it, you become a grass grower because you're, you're no better than anybody else unless you really know how to grow healthy grass. So we found out that there is a plow in Australia made by a guy named uh, Yeoman, Y-E-O-M-A-N. And this plow, uh, Australia is like 10 years ahead of us in, in trying to re reverse climate change. I mean, you saw that the whole country almost burned down uh, decades back. <clears throat> but this plow, what it does is it doesn't disturb the topsoil. You see how I've gone through there and I've made these slits? Can you see the slits? Okay, it goes down 22 inches. And then I make these slits, but before I do, I gotta survey the land. I've gotta find out what the key points are, the key line points. And that's where the water comes down, uh, and then you find the perpendicular of a slope. So when water comes down, you dig that trip or that, that cut, and it goes into the slice, and then it evenly spreads out along the slope. And you do this for the whole pasture, okay? On the back, these things, you can put seed if you want, or you can put organic pellets, which I did, and uh, organic uh, compost pellets. And as it cuts into the earth, it drops the seed or compost down there. And I also rigged up a compost tea tank. And um, uh, the compost tea, when it gets down into the um, soil, it starts all of a sudden this live, um, you know, bacteria just starts growing all this good stuff, and uh, and you start turning red, decayed granite into good living soil. So I mean, I, you know, I've turned this pasture around. So when it rained, what I did, this is a depth, a depth tester. Okay. Um, before it rained, I tried to stick it into the dirt, and I couldn't even get it in there. It was so hard. Okay. So after it rained, what I did is I tested a spot like two feet away, away from where I actually, uh, well, not two feet, I just, it was away from it. Uh, and I tested the wet soil, and it only went down about, I'd say probably like that, that what, three inches, three and a half inches. And I said, well, you know, the water didn't even penetrate that soil. So 
I went in between the slits, okay? And I stuck that thing down there, and it went all the way down in there. Now you might think, well, big deal, Pete. You know, doesn't anything else excite you? You know? Yeah, well, it excited me because for every inch of rain per acre, I get 27,000 gallons of water. That soaks up in that earth. And if I'm going down 22 inches and it doesn't stop raining and all of a sudden I see that water come up and it starts puddling, I'm in second heaven. I'm thinking, let's see, what's 22 times? You know, geez, I don't know. But anyway, so <laughs> I don't care. But the thing is, is that it keeps that soil moist for a long time. Even when in hot weather, you know, I start, you know, breaking through soil, you know, and then I find there it is. There's that wet soil. And what happens? You go into a grass that grows and you only get a three inch root system. Well, now I'm getting a 12 inch root system, All right. you know, and what's happening? That carbon is coming out of there because it's, it's, you know, it's coming back home. You get the nitrogen fixing plants, you know, like it's, you're pulling carbon out of the atmosphere. And that's amazing. I think it's amazing. <laughs> and plus, if I've got barley and, and alfalfa and rye and fescue and all these different grasses that I'm growing for these steers, I don't have to reseed. You know, a lot of farmers do. Sir? Could you elaborate even more how you can refrain the water in your soil? I do not fully understand. How, how, how the water gets in the soil? How you retain the water in your soil? Or retain it? Yeah. It just, it, 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 it goes for a while, you know, it'll stay there. It, use, it eventually goes to the aquifer, okay? But in the meantime, it, it's, it's helped create a, one heck of a root system for grass. And then at the same time, that the uh, cows are coming by, walking by, and they're doing their business on the soil, and then they're stomping into the soil, the seeds and stuff like that. You know, those seeds get the water that is there you know, in the meantime. And for some reason, it's because of the clay. It absorbs that water and it stays there. I, you know, I can't explain it totally, but it does. So, you know, and if it were another kind of, if it were more sandy, it probably would percolate down into the, you know, the aquifer. But, so from that plow that's making that cut to hold everything in? Say again. The plow that, that in the back of that tractor, is that what's causing? Oh, no. What that does is that seals kind of like knocks down the, the, the topsoil that was kicked up. That, you know, when we cut through, you know, as you can see, these, like, these things right here, this, this, all this messy stuff on the soil, it just kind of rolls it over, you know, and you know, kind, of covered, kind of covers it up, actually. You know, it cuts down evaporation also. I wonder how the slits that you're describing, I like that they're less invasive, you know, yeah. than, a, than a traditional plow or something, but how do they compare like to a traditional swell in permaculture where they dig? Oh, okay. Dig? You'll see that in a minute. Oh, you have those? Yeah, I, I also put a swale in. I mean, it's been a okay. tough, tough drought uh, up to this last year. I mean, a real tough drought, you know, I mean, so I'm going. I don't know, I can't irrigate, you know, I, I can't, you know, can't irrigate, it just can't afford to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but so what I did, do you want to go over a little? Okay. We're going to come up to a swale, I'll show you. Oh, okay, was that? Okay, yeah, this, I mean, these, you know, this is our organic garden, you know, and there's nothing better, you know, when you plant stuff you know and you get working in it and all of a sudden you just get this whew, beautiful you know it's it, there's my dog oh my god this is my dog i ran him over in my uh, i had a polaris you know the electric polaris you know what polaris is you know the little four-wheel drive like um like golf a little uh what do you call it uh, little, John Deere. Golf cart. little golf cart yeah the four-wheel drive golf cart anyway 
he ran in front of me and I ran him over. And I, he's okay, poor thing. He's only like over, just a little over a year old, but my wife took him down to the vet, and I gotta pick him up after, after this. But anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. But uh, anyway, so you know, we grow, we grow every, sorry about that. He wasn't too happy He wasn't too happy. So, um, uh, was it back to that? I was gonna tell you. No, 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 which one? The swell. The more. Oh, uh, that that here, the variety of of vegetables and you know that you could grow. It's just you know I didn't think I could grow. You know I, I, I never never been a big farmer. You know, but uh, you know potatoes, sweet potatoes. I it's not in here. I grew a 17 pound sweet potato. You know, and you know I look like one of these clowns. You know, like look, you know, look at my look at my uh, jackalope. You know. <laughs> So anyway, uh, yeah, uh, apples, uh, figs, uh, all sorts of great stuff, you know, that I just, you know. Do you have any wells? Yes, we have a well. Yeah, and it's a, it's not that, doesn't produce that much, but we've got, uh, yeah, we've got uh, uh, 7,500 gallons of collection on that, and then, uh, we put in uh, another 10,000 gallon tank uh, because if we buy 10 tanks, we got a discount. So, you know, because we bought nine before. Anyway, so we put that tank in there. And, you know, you want to go ahead? Um, I think we'll just this is sort of it with those. What? Oh, on the food forest? That's yeah, right. let's keep on going and oh, okay. see if we got. Uh, That's food. it. None of that? Well, well, you can see the view of the, the wind turbine. We didn't plan this. When we built the house, you know, the, the wind turbine is like iconic. It just sticks right in the middle of the view there. <laughs> kind of cool. Yeah. And we have outdoor kitchen there. That, uh, that's that's really good. I, I love it. Yeah. So, could you move on more? Yeah. I just took uh, this is a labyrinth we built. It's a labyrinth that has rocks, so it's like an ac uh, what, what, foot massage, whatever they call it. Uh, reflexology mm -hmm. yeah you can go there at night and then the the stone in the middle glows at night you know and it's really it's really kind of you know you put your socks on to do it and it's really relaxing you know it kind of hits those. Like. Yeah, yeah and there's the tanks too yeah no, well, there's there's other tanks too right down there that uh, pumps water up into uh, the tanks that we use directly from anything else I mean, that was it, yeah. That's it? That's, that's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Also, we have a Tesla that we charge, and I get close to 300 miles on it if I do a full charge. But we also got a Volt, too, which is a electrical car that goes about 40 miles. On, on, on electricity and then gasoline when you need it. But you know, we haven't put gasoline in that car for months because we, you know, we charge, you know, and charge up. And we're not using oil energy to charge them up. We're using the sun and the wind. So, yeah. So, did you use any rebates? Uh, yeah, we got, yeah, we got rebates. Anyway, here's a clue. I mean, here's a, a real good one, I think. And it's just my opinion, okay? Don't lease your. Solar panels. No. No, nobody no. wants to be saying that. Don't leave spiral. Um you mentioned uh, organic compost pellets. I have never seen those. You, yeah, they, they they sell them. Um if you wanna um later on I can give you a card. Okay. And you can get on my uh my website or my not my website, but uh well on the website is this presentation by the way. Uh, oh, but anyway, those pedal, those uh, uh, pellets, they are um, yeah. You can buy you buy them by the uh, five gallon can, oh. and um, or and you. All the stuff's alive. I mean, I would think if they're no, strong. no, it's not. No, it just when so you water have to hits it. Inoculate them and kind of bring them back to life. Yeah, no, you can do that. But this no, these are these are um, organic compost pellets, mm -hmm. and uh, when they when the water hits it, you know they kind of like. So you get them. Yeah, the question, uh, maybe this is more a state issue rather than a federal one. 
you're moving up, it seems. Um, it seems one of the problems with our power structure is that you know, SDG&E doesn't have the storage capacity for all that solar energy that comes from all these thousands of different people. And if you've been reading the reports on that, we give it away or we have to somehow pay to get rid of it. And we've done that recently. And it seems like a complete waste of our time and money and energy. Mm. So yeah. you, what you're doing sounds really good in the sense that you're building your own systems and you're going to recapture all of your energy that you produce. Do you see plans in which if we put in our own solar systems, that we have to have our own capacity and use it yeah. rather than just give it or sell it back to a grid system yeah, that then absolutely. You know, waste it. This is where you know, uh, you know, Tesla is coming up with the ideal battery, okay? And uh, you know, if there was other ones, I would check those out, but this is supposed to be the, the first of its kind. And um, yeah, it's important if you're gonna do, if you're gonna plan on doing that stuff, I'd do it right now because Simpra is, they're working to make sure that you don't have the freedom, the right to get in there and, and create your own off-grid home. They don't want to see that energy. I wanted to interrupt and help answer the question. One of the things we do with the climate action planning is that we're trying to create what's called a community choice aggregation of energy. A lot, some of the cities are doing it. Solana Beach just approved it. Uh, San Diego's going to do it. The city of Lancaster does it, where we make our own utility and we use solar power, wind power, make uh, wind farms, solar farms, and then you ha we would use the existing infrastructure to distribute the energy. Yeah, sure. that's, yeah. that's allowable under, under uh, California law. And many, many cities and communities are doing it. In Fallbrook, we're at a disadvantage because we're not a city, but we have to get uh, San Diego County to Gosh. buy into this and help us put it together. Yeah. Now, Diane Jacobs, she came to her house and they did, uh, they gave they gave us a uh, proclamation, you know, and I thought, oh, this is cool, you know, you know, I've seen those before, you know, and they also said uh, May 26 is Amy McQuillan and Pierre Beauregard Day. I go, yes, finally I get a day, you know, it is great, you know, but she wanted, she's behind this, she's the county supervisor, and she wants me to go and talk to the, uh, the board of supervisors about this and how this can be done. And it can be done on a basis where everybody, I know this, that is making a paycheck, and especially if we create this manufacturing in, in, uh, in, uh, you know, in our district or you know, our area, that these will be good paying green jobs. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, Tesla is now messing with the unions and stuff like that. And, um, you know, uh, they're, they're, you know, we'll see what happens to that, but, uh, you know, you know, I want to see what happens just for better for everybody instead of you know, money going into corporations or any other kind of things. Well, we didn't, you know, we didn't, um, we didn't tell SDG&E, I guess, that, you know, we're still going to use them. You know, we still have power coming in. We're still hooked up to them. Until we get the Tesla battery is when we're going to cut them off and say bye-bye. You know, that's going to be a day. <laughs> Sir? What would be the first thing that you would recommend to a homeowner that we should do, the first project, to get to where you are? Like, what would be the first thing? Uh, you know what? I would say organize. Organize? Okay. Yeah. Organize. I mean... You know, it's to to get here. You know, you can. <clears throat> I've got a solar panel that I put on my. I got a little tiny uh, trailer, you know, that I camp in, stuff like that. And I got a tiny solar panel for that, just to help, you know, keep the lights on and stuff like that. What? So it's like if you want to start getting and and you know subsidizing your power, get you know go and, and find a, a, your own solar stuff. Learn how to do your own solar. <clears throat> it's not rocket surgery. You know, it's you can you get a you get an inverter and you get a solar panel and if you want you can get a battery and you know start off that way. I mean this is how a lot of permaculture people do.
you know? Yeah, we put, we put solar on our house and our electric bill went from, what was it, Joy, $200 a month to nothing. Yeah, well, once it's nothing now. But you have to spend like $200. What's that? They won't put it on unless oh, okay. you can spend $200 <coughs> per month. Oh, yes, they will. Yes, they will. That's, they're just trying to sell you something when they tell you that. You know, yes, they will. I'm, you know, I... Uh, Go to a different contractor if they try to tell you that. Allied Green Builders is the guys that we use. We have a great relationship. You know, we're all friends now. They came to our wedding. Actually, I was uh, with my wife 13 years, and we just got married last May 13th, you know. 16 years. 16 years. <laughs> <laughs> She's here to I did the same thing the other day. You know, haven't seen her since. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, AGB, uh, Alley Green Builders, uh, are the ones that did our project, okay? And, um, but, um, there are modular builders out there, and they're, you know, we're gonna have this meeting, and they're excited about this. They know, they know that they can envision getting this, these kind of uh, products together to make modular homes. You know, it's possible. You know, it's, nothing's impossible. I used to, I was working out with the Navajo uh, two years ago, and I was on a project. We have the uh, elders still living in Hogan's. You know, this is back in the 1800s, you know. Up there, I don't know if you know the Loop, uh, Loop chapter, uh, way out in the middle of nowhere, and um, in, in, in these uh, Hogan's are made out of railroad ties, and the off-gassing is just, it's murder. I don't know how they did it. The water that they drink is contaminated with uranium, and I said, don't you guys have any other? He goes, no, this is it, and they have to travel 15 miles to go get it, and, he, and I said, well, you know, why did, what, what's going on? You know, it's just this tribal councils, you know, they get money. And, and, I, and I said, but you, you radioactive water? He goes, it makes good coffee, though. <laughs> <laughs> so what we did is we got, the, uh, we got the, uh, an organization called uh, the Plateau Solar Project, and we find these elders, certain elders, that um, uh, we get money to build them similar homes. Nice. Wow. Okay. You know, similar homes. Is they're not luxury homes, but I'll tell you, it was 17 when we finished, and we had a group of uh, all the elders and tribal council and stuff like that come in. We did a little, you know, photo op celebration, and I walk in out of a 17 degree weather, freezing my, uh, and uh, we, I walk into the door inside the door, and there's 25 people in there. And it's about 68 degrees. And it's 68 degrees from their body heat. <laughs> you know, what? You know, and it's pressurized. Right. Yeah, pressurized house. First time they've got a nice, you know, brand new refrigerator, uh, you know, stoves, three bedrooms instead of all living in just one Hogan, you know. And uh, what's the uh, percentage of wind power that you're using compared to solar? Well, energy? it blows almost every night. Right, right. So um, I would have to look at the data. I know, I know the data is there. You, you know how much money that the state has allocated for rebates for wind? Uh -uh. Sixty-three million. Wow. Last year, there was only one person that did a rebate. Well. <laughs> no, I, I assume you, you do wind, right? You, you do wind technology? Well, we're, yeah, we're starting to do this. Yeah. And so she came up to me and she says, there's funding for everything. They'll fund for the wind, the solar, the water. And let me tell you this, water. You know, you don't have to, you know, get your rain barrels out and stuff like that and go, what do I do with this now? It's starting to turn green. There's water cister uh, cisterns. That you can that bury under your ground. You can have them dig up next to your house, and it will store rainwater. I think that's the greatest. That's you know the greatest thing since banana margaritas. You got a thing where you can actually collect, you know, your rainwater, and you can you you know you can use it to subsidize your regular city water.